Hello, friends. Welcome to episode five of our podcast, Kids Plorers. We're so excited that you're joining us on our journey to explore and discover new things. You might remember that in our last episode, Professor Smarty Pants helped us learn about tsunamis and the role that earthquakes and volcanoes play in creating these giant waves. You might also remember that when we were choosing this week's topic, Daniel suggested that we should learn about a very interesting person, Stan Lee. So guys, are you ready to hit it off? Yes! Isabella and I learned so much this week about him, and we would love to tell our listeners all about him. Are you guys expecting someone? No, who could this be? Let's check. Hello, friends. Professor Smarty Pants, hello. It's so nice of you to visit us, but what brings you here today? You won't believe it, but I have been waiting for Sunday all week since you guys mentioned that you will be exploring everything there is to know about Stan Lee. You might not know this about me, but I'm a huge comics fan and would be so excited to learn more about this interesting man and his journey to create some of the world's strongest and most popular superheroes. Well, you came just in time. We're just about to start. Come on in and get comfortable, Professor. Today, we will switch roles with you. You will be our student, and we will be the professors. It's so nice to be here. And look at all these superhero toys around your house. If I didn't know any better, I would say that I just walked into a Marvel museum. And there is my favorite superhero, Captain America. Our family loves superheroes, especially the ones from Marvel Comics. We have a giant collection of all things Marvel, We even love making our own Marvel art from fuse beads. Oh wow, I see it. That's incredible. How do you make this superhero art? We make it on a special board by putting together little colorful plastic beads. When we get the shape that we want, Mummy irons it, and then we get these awesome characters. Since we love Marvel characters so much, my room is filled with this kind of art. This is such a neat idea. I love it. It really is. Daniel even made some of my favorite characters for me. And may I put mine in frames. That's amazing. It sounds like you guys are very big Marvel Comics fan. I also love Marvel Comics and all their superheroes. It's great that you remembered to join us today. Knowing how much Daniel and Isabella love superheroes, it only made sense that we learn more about their inventor and how he created them. That's right. And to learn more, I think we need to look back in time a little bit, 100 years to be exact. I want you all to try to imagine the year 1922. We are going to look at Manhattan, which is in New York, USA. What's important about what happened there? On December 28th of that year, a very important person from the Marvel family was born. His name was Stanley Martin Lieber. Who was Mr. Lieber? Well, believe it or not, but Mr. Lieber and Stan Lee are the same person. Stan Lee is a nickname that Mr. Lieber got in high school. He liked it quite a bit, so he kept it as he got older. Did you guys know that Stan Lee was the first person in his family that was born in America? No way. Where was his family from? His parents were a Jewish couple that immigrated to America from Romania. What does immigration mean? Immigration is when people move from one country to a new country with hopes of building a better life there. Interestingly enough, Daddy and I are also immigrants, just like Stan Lee's parents. Moving to a new country can be tough sometimes, especially if you don't speak the new language or if you don't have any family or friends in the new country. It must have been tough for his parents to come to America when they did. His dad needed to work really hard to earn enough money to take care of his wife and two sons. He worked as a tailor but unfortunately did not earn enough money. That must be tough. I also bet that New York looked very different in those years than it does now. Do you guys know what happened in America in the end of the 1920s? No, what happened? In the end of 1920s, beginning of the 1930s, America and many other countries were in a very bad financial situation. 
Many people lost their jobs and family had very little money to buy things like food and clothing. This period of time was called the Great Depression. Oh, that explains why Stanley started working when he was only 16 years old. At that time, his uncle was able to help him find a job as an assistant at a company called Timely Comics. What did he do at Timely Comics? Well, at first he didn't do anything he really liked. His main responsibility were to bring lunches for the artists at the company, and he would refill their ink bottles. Stanley really always wanted to become a writer, but because of the difficult financial situation at home, he started working at Timely Comics. Everyone at his job could see how hardworking he was, and slowly they started to teach him more things related to comics. His first real comics job was writing some text for a Captain America comic. Is it true that when he started doing more comic work, Stan Lee created a new superhero? That's right. He created a hero called the Destroyer, which is a character very similar to Captain America. But before he could make this character famous, World War II broke out and he enlisted in the military. What does enlisted mean? It means that he joined the army in 1942. There he worked as a playwright. What does a playwright mean? A playwright in the military was tasked with creating training videos and instructional films for the soldiers. I actually read that he worked with some other artists. One of them was the famous Dr. Seuss. You're right. Well, when Stan Lee returned from the war, America changed a lot. Comics weren't selling too well, and now most of the readers were children. He continued to work at Timely Comics, but the company wasn't doing well. This is when Stan Lee, along with a brilliant comic book artist and writer, Jack Kirby, created a group of heroes called the Fantastic Four. They decided to make these characters more interesting for teenagers, just like other comics companies were doing at the time. Eventually, Jack and Stan turned Timely Comics to the Marvel comics we all know and love today, which shows you that their new strategy worked very well. This is also when Stan Lee and Jack Kirby invented a new way of making comics. First Jack would draw the comic and later Stan Lee would write the story. Yes, that was called the Marvel Method. Interesting. How did they come up with these superheroes for their comics? I'm so happy you asked. Let me tell you one story about one of my favorite superheroes, Spider-Man. One day when Stan Lee was busy trying to create new superheroes, he saw a bug crawling on the wall. He thought it would be groovy if a superhero had the power of an insect. He came to Jack Kirby with this idea, and together they created the Spider-Man we all love today. Did you know Spider-Man is just a teenager? I did. I think it's so cool to have a superhero who is not an adult. I think it shows everyone that you can make a big difference in the world no matter how old you are. That's right. Peter Parker, which is the real name of Spider-Man, is a teenager. There are a few reasons why Stan Lee created a teenage superhero, and one of them is exactly what you said, Professor. Stan Lee knew that most of the people reading comics were actually teenagers, so he created a hero that Marvel readers could relate to, a friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. I love Spider-Man and his awesome spider webs. I agree. He's an awesome hero. Stan Lee also created the Hulk. He actually created him because he liked the story of Frankenstein. He wanted to invent the strong giant who people were afraid of but to actually a good guy. Originally, Stan Lee and Jack Kirby made the Hulk the color gray, but they had to switch him because each time they printed it out, the color would be different. After that, he also created Thor, Iron Man, X-Man, and others. To compete with other comics companies like DC Comics, Marvel needed to come up with their own League of Heroes. At first, they created X-Man and later the Avengers. Wait a minute, what is DC Comics? DC Comics is a company that created another group of superheroes like Wonder Woman, Superman, and Batman, to name just a few. 
It sounds like both companies gave each other a big competition, but it's great that they pushed each other to be more creative and try new things. I'm not sure we would have all these amazing superheroes, comics, and movies if not for this competition. You're right. I also think that Stan Lee felt that he needed to talk about important issues for people. One very important superhero that he invented was Black Panther. When people ask him why he created this hero, he explained that he had many friends who were black who did not see black superheroes in comics, and he felt that his readers needed to connect with the heroes. Therefore, T'Challa was created. I think that it's so important for young comics readers to see different heroes, and ones that might even look a bit like them. I agree. I want to point out another thing. At the beginning, when all this competition was happening between different comic companies, many superheroes were also copied from one another. For an example, Thanos is similar to Darkseid, Quicksilver to Flash, Hawkeye to Green Arrow, and more. Very interesting. I never thought about how they were similar, but now that you mention it, I get it. I think that Stan Lee was an amazing inventor of comics, and he really contributed a lot to the world of superheroes. But it wasn't all straightforward. Stan Lee was a very outgoing man who was liked by lots of people. This is what allowed his company to grow and become what it is today. And he began to be seen by others as the face of the company and the father of Marvel. Here's where it gets tricky, though. Stan Lee did create many heroes, but he did not achieve this all on his own. Other artists, like Jack Kirby and Steve Ditko, helped invent these heroes and were often not given the same respect as Stan Lee, which caused quite a bit of conflict between them. That's a bit sad, but I think Stan Lee did a great job of making his company so popular. Did you know Stan Lee was in lots of movies? He wasn't exactly an actor, but he did make 22 cameos in some of the more recent Marvel movies. Wow, I thought I was imagining him in the movies that I watch, but now I know that it was really him. Yes, his last cameo was in the movie Endgame. Sadly, Stan Lee died on November 12th, 2018, at the age of 95. I'm going to miss Stan Lee. He was a real Marvel. He really was. Wow, guys, I didn't expect to learn this much about Marvel and Stan Lee, but I'm so happy that I came today. We're so happy you joined us. This was really interesting. Stan Lee did some amazing things throughout his life. Now I wonder what we should explore in next week's episode. Well, actually, I'm not sure if you know this, but the Winter Olympics started this past Friday in Beijing. Isabella and I were watching figure skating yesterday and got really curious about the history of the Winter Olympics. So... Why don't we learn about the Winter Olympics? I love this idea. And I love Winter Olympics, especially curling. I agree. It's a great idea. Friends, join us again next Sunday as we explore the Winter Olympics. We hope you liked today's episode. We would be so excited to see you guys share with us any Marvel art that you might have created. You can also check out our Instagram page where Isabella and Daniel shared some of the Marvel art that they have created. I drew Stan Lee, and I made him out of fuse beads. Thank you to all our listeners who have been tuning in and sharing our podcast with your family and friends. This helps us grow our podcast. We will be so grateful if you continue to share it with all your friends who you think would like to join us on our explorations. We always look forward to hearing from you about any feedback and suggestions for what you'd like us to explore in future episodes. In the meantime, if you liked our episode today, we will be so excited if you could give us a review on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or any other platform you listen to us on. It will mean so much to us. And this is it, the end of our fifth episode. Thank you all. Until next week, goodbye. Guys, I completely forgot.